Uh, hey there, Caleb. Oh, hey, Prof. I found your collection. I found your cards here. This is, uh, this is neat. Not sure about the, the curve on this, but... What are you doing in my office with my magic cards? Just passing through town? Figured we could watch a movie or something, hang out, bro down? What do you, what do you think? Uh-huh, cool, cool. How did you get in the office? I have a security system. Security system? The four-digit alphanumeric? Come on, I set up OBS. That is nothing. Yeah, despite the disturbing fact of you in my office, I can't watch a movie right now, man. I got a video to make. A video? Well, I can help you with that. How would you like the number one Twitch streamer to shoot your video for you? Seriously? You can make that happen? Yeah, I'd love a deck tech from Jeff Hoagland. Hoagland? No, I'm the number one Twitch streamer. Me! You watch a movie with me, I will do a deck tech for you. Okay, deal. What movie do you want to watch? What movie? Only the best movie of all time. Star Wars. Check out this Tatooine. You know, I've never seen Star Wars, and there's like nine of them or whatever, and I'm always hearing everybody yelling at everybody else about which ones are good and which ones are bad, and I don't really want to deal with that. You don't have to get into all that. You don't have to deal with it. Start with the first one. George Lucas, the height of his filmmaking powers, legendary filmmaker, makes this, uh, this movie that becomes an iconoclast of American society. You need to see this movie, and if you don't like it, you don't have to watch any of the other ones. All right, man, deal. I watch the first one with you, and if I don't like it, I don't have to watch any more, and either way, I get a deck tech from you. Bet, it's a deal, let's fire up the video. Ready? Let's do this. Hold on, this is the wrong movie. This is episode one. Yeah, the first Star Wars. No, 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 the, the, the first Star Wars is A New Hope. This is episode one. Right, you said you wanted to watch the first Star Wars. This is the first Star Wars. I rented the first Star Wars. These movies are not good. These movies are travesties. Well, you're the one who wanted to watch it, dude. You needed to rent Star Wars episode four, A New Hope. No way, dude. I'm not doing one of those things where I have to wait through four movies just for the show to get good. If it's not good from the start, there's no point to it. I, I, so this is it. This is what I agreed to watch, the first episode. A New Hope is the start. Oh my God. Quiet, I can't hear the space rabbit. Uh -oh. What's he saying? I'm not trading a deck tech for the Phantom Menace. The deal is off, sir. The deal, the deal is off. The deal is not off. I'm watching this stupid movie. You have to do the stupid deck tech. I will ruin you. I will ruin this building. I will ruin your YouTube channel. I will destroy you. This is, this is, this is the worst. No, oh, I have never been treated this way. I will never do a deck tech for episode one. Episode one. Jeff Hoagland's so much easier to work with. This is the worst movie ever made. This Modern Shamans is a vehicle for Rage Forger. And believe me, Rage Forger is an excellent, excellent payoff, but we'll get to that later. In a lot of ways, Shamans is, an, is a very aggro deck. It's very, very aggressive. You're not trying to control the opponent. However, it's not aggressive in the same way a deck like Burn or Zoo is aggressive, where the creatures are front-loaded. Uh, a Zoo deck will play a Wild Nicodal on turn one. Bam, turn one, three, three. Modern Shamans is playing a turn one Flamekin Arbinger to go tutor for Rage Forger, play more Shamans on turn two, and then by turn three, all of a sudden it's loading up all of the creatures with one, one counters, getting in for those pings. If you get multiple Rage Forgers in play, they stack. You get each, you get a, a, a Rage Forger ping for each attack trigger, and it, it adds up very, very quickly. Your opponents, at some times, at some points, your opponents will actually have very, very good blockers in play. Cards like Tarmogoyf, Worm Coil Engine, cards that would be very difficult for a deck playing Wild Nacodles to actually win with, and Rage Forger uh, will allow you to kill the opponent uh, before you actually get to damage, just from the triggers itself. It is a, it is a very powerful card. Modern Shamans is originated as a red-green deck. I'm currently splashing black for Judith. Judith the Scourge Diva is a sweet, sweet card. Great addition to the deck. It's one of the reasons I wanted to come back to Shamans. I played around with red-green Shamans a while ago, somebody else's list, and I decided to update the deck with Judith. Once I saw it, it was a Shaman. So you can, again, collect those Rage Forger triggers and get benefits from Boss Banneret and the like. Giving your entire team plus one plus zero is really, really good in this deck. Uh, the deck is already designed to flood the battlefield to collect Rage Forger triggers and get that buff, so Antheming the team is great. Also, when your creatures die, you get to ping something. Really, really good in a, in a lot of aggressive matchups, actually, because you can trade off with your opponent's creatures and then uh, kill their lords, that sort of thing. And then it gives you a little bit of reach 
against uh, opposing control decks. So Rage Forger is the key element of the deck, and oh my god, is it worthwhile? It puts a 1 1 counter on all of your creatures, and then it gives you that direct damage burst when you go to attack. Anyone that's ever cast a Hellrider before knows exactly how powerful that direct damage burst from just tapping your creatures sideways, how, just how good it feels. And Rage Forger is more efficient than Hellrider, it costs one, one less, and we can tutor for it with Flamekin Arbinger, and Collected Company can find it, so be sure to cast your Cocos pre-combat so you can take advantage of those triggers if you hit. Collected Company is a modern staple. It is a, one of the best cards in modern. It's very good in tribal decks because you're piecing together multiple creatures that have synergy with one another. In this deck, it hits Flame Canarbiger that can tutor for Rage Forger. It can find the Rage Forger itself. It can find your Judith. It can give you this giant burst in power the turn that you're gonna try to lethal the opponent or after the opponent has swept your board, it can help you refill by finding cards like Elvish Visionary, Burning Tree Emissary, that sort of thing. Three cards that are a little bit less obvious at first are Fire Drinker Seder, Metallic Mimic and Spike Shot Elder. Fire Drinker Seder is in here because we just need more one drops besides Flamekin Arbinger and Spike Shot Elder. It's very, very bad against other aggressive creature decks. It doesn't trade very well, deals you damage and stuff, but against a, a control deck or a combo deck, it helps you apply that early pressure and it gives the deck more things to do on turn one. You wouldn't be have a very good aggro deck if your only turn one play was Flamekin Arbinger, although in some matchups, Lightning Bolt can take up some of the slack for that. Metallic Mimic is another Lord, similar to Judith or Rage Forger, and like Rage Forger, it has plus one, plus one counter synergies. If you use Metallic Mimic to get one, one counters on all of your creatures, Rage Forger will also be able to take advantage of that with pings. Spike Shot Elder is a card that I started with one or two of, but it performed very, very well, especially when you get the chance to grow it, again, with Rage Forger. Three mana to deal one damage in modern, not very strong. Three mana to deal two damage. Three mana to deal three damage. It's starting to get a little bit better, especially when you can repeat it. And something that I really like about Spike Shot Elder, it's something to do when you flood. If your aggro deck can make use of flood and convert that into damage, convert those extra land drops into damage, then you're going to see some increase in your win rates. There are some matchups where the opponent does such a good job of slowing you down, you will eventually hit those land drops, especially the slower control decks in modern. The rest of the deck is mostly filler. We've got Burning Tree Emissary, which is a free shaman. Boss Banneret is a very innocuous little card. Two mana for one three. Doesn't seem like the stat line for an aggressive deck. However, if you can play your Elvish Visionaries for one mana, they become much more impressive. If you can play your Rage Forges for two mana, they become a lot more impressive. It just allows the deck to operate much more explosively and on much fewer land drops. Rixmati Reveler also helps you loot through the deck and find Rage Forger. Note that Elvish Visionary and Rixmati Reveler also let you draw into the Flamekin Arbinger. So when you tutor for the Rage Forger, you can then draw it on the same turn. And if you have enough mana, drop it into play immediately, get that bonus, get those Ws. Elvish Visionary, Rixmati Reveler, not cards that you would expect to see in an aggro deck. However, they, like I mentioned, they draw you into your Rage Forgers. They also find you your Cocos. They find you more Shamans to collect Rage Forger triggers. They work very, very well in this deck. Lightning Bolt can be a turn one play against an aggro mirror, but it can also help finish off a control opponent. So it's the perfect removal spell for this deck. The mana base is mostly built towards a, the original red green deck. We have added a couple of black sources for the Judith Splash, the potential for Rick's Mahdi Reveler, a spectacle, and a few sideboard cards. But for the most part, we are still playing a red-green deck. Cavern of Souls is really, really nice. Helps with the splashes. Can still pay for spectacle on Reveler. Copperline Gorge, excellent card. Painless, free, fantastic. The rest of the mana base, pretty straightforward. We got some fetches, we got some dual lands. Uh, we have a lone Firelit Thicket. Firelit Thicket, nice for switching Burning Tree Emissary into more useful mana if it's like, if it's just spitting out the wrong kind. And it's also pretty good filtering for Spike Shot Elder. In terms of the sideboard, Tormod's Crypt is one of our best possible options against Dredge. It's very mana efficient. Dredge is a deck that's taking off the first couple of turns and costs zero mana, it's perfect. However, if you're expecting a meta with a lot of Tarmogoyfs, you might consider playing a Relic Progenitus or two. Next up, Surgical Extraction. Surgical Extraction is excellent against reanimator type strategies and the Arclight Phoenix decks that have gotten popular in, in modern lately. And again, it's, it's also very, very good against Dredge. Reclamation Sage, it's a shaman, baby. It gets 1-1 one, one counters from Rage Forger while blowing up artifacts and enchantments. There are a few artifact and enchantment based decks in modern. While not the most efficient card we could have possible, it's no ancient grudge. It is also hittable with Collected Company, and that's great. 
Plague Crafter, also a shaman. I like Plague Crafter against decks with uh, Planeswalkers, like Blue White Control. I also like it against decks that are playing a very few giant creatures. So that could be decks playing Gurmag Angler, Tarmogoyf, or uh, Death Shadow. Plague Crafter all looks pretty good against all of those decks. Fulminator Mage is both a shaman and an elemental, so you can actually tutor for it with Flamekin Arbinger. Not bad. You bring that in against decks that are relying on non-basics, decks like Tron, decks like uh, Blue-White Control that needs Celestial Colonnade to win, um, and uh, sometimes Scape Shift as well. Eternal Witness, another Shaman, great for rebuying Collected Company in the grindiest of matchups. Sometimes I shave a Judith to fit in Eternal Witness where it's appropriate. And then of course Bonfire of the Damned is a little bit, not, not a very common sideboard card in Modern, but it is very powerful and very good against decks full of Mana Dorks. Uh, decks that are playing Devoted Druid, Birds of Paradise, Noble Hierarch, that sort of thing. Basically, if you are fine playing Bonfire of the Damned for three mana against them, it's going to be a good sideboard card to bring in. Hey, hope you liked the deck tech. Hope it was a good time. Uh, if you're looking for me, if you're getting, if you're looking to get a hold of me personally, my home address is at 110. Wait, don't no. tell him your home address. That's insane. Uh, 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 my, my, uh, my Twitch stream. You can find me at my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash CalebDMTG, or you can find me on Twitter at at CalebDMTG. See you folks later. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.